welcome back. Two guests this evening, Paul Smith, the ex-Sheffield Wednesday physio, and his old mate, former Owls midfield player, Matt Hamshaw. Uh, another 20-odd minutes to go because we didn't get anywhere near half through it in the uh, first half. Um, Ex-Stockport, Mansfield, Notts County and Macclesfield as well, uh, Matt. Quite, quite a list of clubs. And now, how sort of... Um, much are you enjoying the other side of it, the coaching? Because I think at quite an early stage, you felt that that was the way you were going. It didn't happen by accident, the end of your career and what am I going to do, did it? No, I was coaching while I was playing and it was something that I, I, I really, really enjoyed. Um, not just at professional level with professional clubs, but um, with, with comprehensive kids and, and all different age ranges. and. I always wanted to kind of work my way up through my coaching badges and then last week I, um, I got my UEFA Pro licence which obviously is, a, is kind of end of my pathway for my coaching right. badges. So Just last week? Yeah, oh, yeah. congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So Brilliant. obviously, um, yeah, really proud moment for something yeah. that took a long time, something I set out yeah. a long time ago to achieve, so yeah. And in fact, you've been linking with Paul Warren and Richie Barker now for, for quite a while, it's a couple of years. Yeah, it's uh, just, this will be... be with Paul, it'll be two and a half, and uh, obviously Richie would come in after the last relegation, so two years with Rich, so yeah. Yeah, yeah invaluable experience, and obviously th there seems to be a real feel-good element uh, about that club. I don't think it's anything that you could make a pretense about and fabricate, it's, it just seems to be there. People, I can feel it when I go there. Mm. It, it, it is that genuine and close-knit between it, you. It, it's, it's a great football club. It's um, Everybody knows everybody, uh, yeah. so it has a real togetherness, a real, and one thing certainly when, when obviously Paul got the job and, and myself and Richard come in was, we wanted to connect with everybody really. I think there were a point when we first took over where nobody wanted to come to the club. Um, it were bad times really, and I think we've, we've managed to turn that round, but from my point of view, every day we go in, we're smiling, laughing, it's just a great place to work. Yeah, can imagine it with uh, with, with Paul. Uh, but you, you've also got a balance of personalities with Richie as well, you know. Yeah, well, well, well <laughs> we have a bit well, of a joke. So, yeah, so Paul says he's uh, obviously a funny guy, and Richie's yeah. grumpy one, and I sit somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it, it works well. Yeah, great uh, play as well made by the manager of, when he signed Freddie Ladapo or Ladapo, however we're going to pronounce it, of him being a good bloke. As well as a, a as well as a good player, so high up on your list of priorities. It is, yeah, and manager is massively keen on that. Um, it, it, it's it's strange. I think from the outside, when you see it first time, certainly when he does meet a player, it is a bit surreal because he, he asks some kind of probing questions. That aren't like, to do with football. Yeah, that aren't to do with football. No, um, right. and, and he wants and he wants people to buy in to wanting to play for the club. He wants. He wants that buying straight away. If he senses that a player is just speaking to us for the other in reasons, that'll be the end of it. But um, yeah, it, it, it's quite refreshing actually. From he, he always knew what he wanted, and when he first said what he wanted to me, I, if I'm going to be 100% honest, I was like that might be a bit difficult. Um, but having seen it, you know, it's worked fantastically well. well. This was when he recruited you? Yeah, right? well, he st I stepped up from the academy. So, yeah. obviously, Paul was fitness coach and I moved up from academy. So, um, initially, obviously, as, as everybody knew, he didn't want the job. He thought management weren't for him. But I saw a lot of great things in him but I, as a manager. And I know other people at the football club did. So, we were almost trying to talk him around and saying, look, and even yeah. then he's still adamant that he didn't want it and I think looking back over time it was a fantastic decision here that the chairman had because I know the chairman were, were a big mm. admirer and wanted him to take it but I think if you look back at his reign it has been successful. Mm. And how do you rate your prospects of bouncing straight back again? How would you compare what you've got now and what you might have when you've completed your transfer? Uh, summer uh, with the promotion team a couple of years ago. Yeah, well, you'd, uh, I'd like to think we're going to be really competitive. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to win yeah. league, or, but I, I, we have an objective that, that we want to get, and I'd like to think that we'd, we would be there or thereabouts at, uh, come the end of the season. Obviously, yeah. it's a difficult league, and you, we all know anything can happen, but I think that with what we've got and hopefully what we're going to bring in, um, we should be competitive, yeah. 
Michael Smith is somebody that you, uh, Paul Smith, worked with at, uh, at Barry. No yeah. relation, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and he, he wasn't pulling up any trees, was he, when, when Rotherham No, it, he, he seemed to lack a little bit of confidence, to be honest, Yeah. Uh, when he was with us. Um, but, you know, we knew he was a good player. Uh, it just didn't quite work for him at Barry for whatever reason. And obviously Rotherham took him and uh, he's done really well. I was at Hillsborough for the game. Uh, when he scored early in the second half, which is a great goal. It was a storming goal. Yeah. Um, and I've also seen him hit them from 25, 25 yards, which mm. people don't expect or don't imagine that he's got in his locker. Also against Ipswich, I think, very last minute of the game, first home game of the season last mm. year, he scored a really well-taken winning, oh. winning goal, didn't he? He did, so, yeah. He's got m more to it than being a, a really good athlete and a strong target man. But it doesn't score the goals that suggests he does. No, I think obviously in Championship it, it, it's a difficult league anyway, and, and at times you were probably isolated a little bit with the way we played. So um, I think the fact that some teams at some point play three up against him speaks volumes. If you think that a lad has come from Berry and not playing at Berry to all yeah. of a sudden doing what he did in Championship, but I mean we're quite fortunate, obviously, with Paul and Richard both strikers. So. We've had Danny Ward, Kiefer Moore, and now Michael Smith, and you know they really do put a lot of time and effort in, into strikers, and and obviously that's worked for Smudge. I guess now I think he'll be one of the leading scorers in the League One next season. What do you say, Paul? Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, yeah. You know, he works really hard. He's a handful, and, and he will get goals. And he's not going to be as isolated as he had to be in maybe in not the, in the Championship yeah. and. Freddie Ladarpo as well, you know, plenty of goal uh, potential there. And probably a balance in the, the qualities of the two, do you think? Definitely, yeah, and it, it, we're quite fortunate at, at this moment in time. We've got Jamie Proctor coming back, yeah. Kyle Vassell's there, yeah. uh, Michael Smith, Freddie Ladapo. Um, we've got a lot of options, good options yeah. up, up front, and, you know, whoever is doing well will, will be picked, and it's a great problem to have for a manager. Certainly is. Um, how do you see Sheffield Wednesday doing uh, next season, uh, Paul? Uh, we know there's one or two players coming in. Odebarjo, there's Borna, the, uh, the German uh, centre-back. Uh, Kadim Harris, um, they haven't announced it yet, but I think it's all agreed from, uh, from Cardiff City, a winger. How do you, how do you see those, those moves? Good moves. Um, I think Harris is, is a, meant to be a really, really good player. Don't know too much about the others, but you know there's, there is the nucleus of a really good squad there. So top six for me. You, yeah, you're that yeah. confident. Yeah. Because I looked at the championship the other day, and it doesn't look frightening this time. No. You know, the teams who've come up from League One, I'm, I, I don't want to belittle them. The likes of Luton and Barnsley don't strike fear fear into you. No. You've lost a heavyweight in Aston Villa that's gone out. The teams that have come down don't strike fear. You know. An opportunity for Wednesday. I think so. Yeah, it's, Caddy, it's looking like Derby are going to lose Frank Lampard. Yeah. So you know, I think I don't think there's anything to fear in that division now. No. Do you agree with that? I mean, obviously you're going to be League One, so you can. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it'll still be competitive. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Swansea have, have have got a new manager. That'll be interesting to see how that works. Uh, Fulham, I would expect to do really, really well. You can't obviously forget about Cardiff with Neil Warnock's record in that division. So, True. Um, I think it will be competitive, but again, as, as, as we've just rightly said, the nucleus of the squad is there at Sheffield Wednesday, and we've, I think they've got the right man in charge. So you would expect, if they are firing and do perform consistently, that they should be up there. Yeah? Mm. Fulham uh, could, though, be a bit like Stoke, because I think if you, you looked at it in terms of squad and the quality in the squad yeah. last year you'd have said all oh, Stoke will be top two or nowhere near definitely nowhere yeah near. And, I, and I think that again we are re referring back to financial fair play again you, you don't know Fulham are going to end up keeping so no. Mitrovic could end up leaving Sesson Young could yeah. end up going in and again that wouldn't surprise me if it happened in pre-season so I think with the transfer window changing again so you, they can't bring anybody in after the first game of the season It'll be really interesting in the next two, three weeks to see who ends up where. It will. That's why it's very difficult in the middle of summer to start predicting what teams are going to do. But you assume that Sheffield Wednesday are going to keep their better players, even though 
on the face of it, they should really have had a cycle of players coming in and out. Now the problems have been caused because there's been no sales. Loads of signings, stockpiling and no sales. But in the market at the moment, I can't see anybody going for a huge amount of money. There was loads of talk about Adam Reach, wasn't there? Mm. Um, and I haven't seen a single line of speculation about a bid for Alan, Adam Reach. No, you? there's been nothing, no, and, and, and obviously Bannon, Forestier, they're good, they're good players and, and they, yeah. they get the most championship teams. So the fact that they haven't been linked anywhere boards well for Sheffield Wednesday, really. I think so. And with that Adam Reach, you'd expect a, you know, a minimum bid of around £10 million. I don't think it's there. I don't think the money's there no. or the club to come in uh, and, and, and bid. Like father, like son, we, you work together now. Uh, Alan's been around seemingly forever. Uh, <laughs> I, I know him well and certainly remember his sprints onto the field, you know, in the Howard Wilkinson days. Yeah. Uh, he became a bit of a, a, you know, physios don't often get any recognition, but he became a, a cult figure, didn't he, your, your old man? He certainly did, yeah. I think that. Partly to do with his speed onto the Bandy pitch. legs and yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. And you work with him now. And of I course, do. it's a long established practice, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it's been established since 2002. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, do you miss being involved in the professional game? I've or? not really missed it. I've only, you know, I've worked for 23 years in the game, solid. Yeah. And I've only been out of it for a year. Uh, but no, I can't really say I've missed it that much. No. Really enjoy working in the private practice. Right. Yeah. I bet you've met some characters over the years because physios probably get to know players as well as, if not better, the managers. Is that a fair comment? I think it, it is fair comment because you spend a lot of time with them, particularly if they pick up a long-term injury. Um, you know, so you do end up building a good mm. relationship with them, and there's a lot of talk of what goes on at you know at home yeah. or yeah. whatever else. So yeah, you do end up close to the players. Yeah, they become almost like a counselling expert, Absolutely, I yeah. imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your physio, by the way? Uh, Paul Gamble's our physio, Paul Gamble. yeah, so. yeah. Right. Well, he's, you know, kind of under the radar and one of the unsung physio figures. But your, your manager, Paul Warren, uh, is just a brilliant media operator <laughs> just by being himself. And it's not an act. He's just him, isn't it? He is him, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that that's why... I, probably uh, people like him. I think yeah. he's honest and open and as you said earlier, he's very, very infectious. So when you're in his company, you end up smiling and laughing a lot. And, yeah. um, or crying sometimes. Or crying, well, yeah. yeah, he has been known to do that a couple of times, but I think that's one of his qualities, you know. He, he knows what he is and he, don't, he doesn't try to pretend to be anything he's not. And as I say, that's the sort of person that you want to be working for, really. Mm. Uh, just before we leave the subject of Sheffield Wednesday and injuries, I, what kind of a, a season and future ahead do you feel for Fernando Forestieri, as gifted a player as probably any in the championship and yet fitful now for two years, mm. out for spells, long spells, a few problems on and off the pitch. Um, is he going to hit the kind of form of his first season well we certainly Wednesday. hope so as Wednesday fans you know you certainly yeah. hope he will but what you tend to find as players get older and they start picking these injuries up particularly the soft tissue injuries the muscle injuries that cycle just continues um, so hopefully you know they can work hard and we're bringing Tony in as well hopefully they can have a good pre-season and, and prevent as many of those types of injuries as possible there's talk, and I'm sure that there's foundation in it, of Steve Bruce using his Premier League con contacts to bring in a couple of players, you know, from Premier League clubs, of real promising younger players that those clubs want to, to expose to some action. It makes a difference, doesn't it, Paul, if you can get them in time for a bit of pre-season work? Yeah, they need to integrate into the squad. Yeah. Um, you know, pre-season is such a, a basis for your fitness that takes you through for the rest of the season. It's really important that everybody sort of comes through the vast majority of that, like I said, for that basis to go to go forward for a long, long hard slog in the championship or League One, whichever division you're in. Because quite often you see them arriving during a season in the January window, for instance, yeah. and you know they're talented. Oh, Josh and Omar there is a case in point who came on loan from Chel from uh, from Spurs uh, and 
really was very patchy, didn't really impress. Mm. But clearly Steve Bruce, who'd worked with him previously at Aston Villa, has retained an interest, I think, in bringing him back because he knows what he can really do when he's match fit and so many of them come in with no football at all do, do they yeah it, it, I think that I think the first loan sometimes is really really difficult for any player yeah. um, I, I know we played Nottingham Forest early in that season and I, I was at the game when uh, he, he played against uh, Forest for Sheffield Wednesday and they were best player on, on the pitch on that night mm. um, and I were a little bit surprised that he probably didn't hit the heights of that game later yeah. on um, but I, I sometimes think that we're, we're certainly when they've had the first loan, it can be really, really difficult. However, obviously the, the bigger clubs expect a lot from them, so mm. so they won't send them to somewhere to probably get a little bit of experience because they probably see that as being look. We don't want them to to ruin him a little bit. So it, it's yeah. always a difficult position to be in, really. Yeah, difficult for the player, difficult for the for the club, but they they have got. I, I don't know about you, but uh, I'd welcome back uh, Rolando Arons. I know that he he got injured, uh, but that might have been part of you know not having a pre-season, yeah. not being a, a regular player for Newcastle. Yeah, absolutely. Then you get thrown into the Championship, and you're expected to play. But he looked you know, damn good, didn't he? Yeah, he got something. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think there are efforts going on in that direction. And the uh, Lash, oh crack it, I haven't got these names written down here. Lazar, uh, the guy who played left back but could play le left midfield. I thought he was even better. Mm, good he, player. He, absolutely. And I was talking to Neil Redfern about him um, around the time that Steve Bruce signed, signed them because he'd worked with him at uh, Newcastle. Yeah. And he picked him out saying, what a good player. Mm. He in his opinion he is. By the way, Neil Redfern could end up being manager of Newcastle because he's the only guy left standing there. <laughs> the under 23s coach. I wish him well. One of the nicest guys yeah, in brilliant. Great he's on my list to come yeah. in here. Yeah. Um, right, well let's have a look at some events coming up over the weekend. Right, th this is first of all, Yuri's Walking Football. This has uh, become a, a regular event on the Sporting Canada here. Ex-Premier League referee Uriah Rennie uh, he's walking football fundraiser, it's a walking football marathon, six hours beginning uh, tomorrow, that's Friday the 28th of June, starts at 10pm at Hillsborough Leisure Centre, goes right the way, almost all the way through the night for six hours until 4am, uh, raising money there for uh, good causes including Western Park Cancer Charity and St Luke's, um, I think that's the fourth year that uh, Yuri's been doing that, and he's tireless really because the uh, the following day he's he's refereeing this. So so here we are. This is the the Reds v Blues game. It's not actually going to be Reds v Blues this time. It's a Reds v Blues eleven uh, from a squad that's uh, written there. I don't know about that billing there. I think I should be at the bottom of that, not the, not somewhere at the top, uh, but uh, and certainly not a manager. Um, so you can tell this is not to be taken too seriously. And this is at 2:30 uh, p.m. kickoff on the 29th Sunday, the Saturday, the 29th of June. And my co-manager Paul is sitting here. Paul, <laughs> what are we? What are we, what, what are we going to do with? How are we going to do this? I think it's the blind leading the blind, though, isn't it? <laughs> I think it is. Yeah. I don't know about you, but. I've always been a sort of manager that believes in giving responsibility to players. Absolutely. Especially when they lose. Yeah? <laughs> Full responsibility yeah. to do your own thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it should be fun. I mean, it, it, it always is. Uh, and I, I'd like to pay tribute to um, the people who organise this uh, year in, year out. So it's Daz Clapham and his wife uh, Lucy uh, are absolutely tireless. Uh, self-effacing, don't want any credit, uh, and they're always out there working all year. Um, a thankless task in the middle of summer to get so many sporting people, ex-players, boxers, even soap stars to, to turn up. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, and they do this for, I'm just reminding myself of the, uh, the charities, um, uh, it's uh, Hillsborough Army Cadets uh, and also Sheffield uh, Children's Hospital proceeds will go go to so and you've played in it haven't you you can't this time no I can't unfortunately we're back in pre-season trading so um, we'll, we'll I'll be taking the session but no I have played in it it's a fantastic yeah. day and obviously the more people can come and obviously um, the people who arrange it are fantastic it really is a well-run day and you know as I say you just want plenty of people to turn out I'm sure weather's going to be good and 
Brilliant um, for too hot. Hopefully we get plenty there and yeah, there, is, there we, is a lot of money. We could just stand there and uh, <laughs> let them do their work. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So was, oh, I'm disappointed. I was gonna, we were going to make him an offer, weren't we, tonight? Yeah. We are going to yeah, make him well, an offer. Well, my, my plan, Hammy playing, was just literally give it Hammy. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Let him well, do his, let him do well his last work. year the plan was give it to Craig Armstrong. I'm not sure he's playing this year, and that next next Wednesday player. Mm. But uh, we still lost seven three. <laughs> I made some bad substitutions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was Yuri's fault as well. Yuri refereed yeah. that as well. Yuri, Yuri Rennie, he'll be half asleep, won't he? Yeah. <laughs> he'll miss out. We need VAR. <laughs> no. What do you make of VAR, honestly? Um, give me an honest view. I <laughs> I like it in one aspect of the fact that the decisions are right. So as a coach, it's good. However, um, from a uh, from probably a young boy and, and and man who loves football, I think it takes all the emotion away from it. So I think I'm not too sure what avenue we're going to go down. I mean, I remember my first games I went to when were a young lad at Rotherham, and when somebody scored, it's just amazing. Now. What's going to happen when somebody scores? If you're a Premier League fan now, we have VAR. Are players going to celebrate? Are they going to wait until VAR has been given and then fans jump up after? I just don't really know what route it's going to go down. And I understand if it's clear and obvious, but I think we saw it Nations League with England offside. That ain't clear and obvious. So for me, that should have goal should have been given. And I'm, I'm not just saying it. Obviously, I'm an England fan as well. But I think had that been a Dutch goal, I'd be saying the same thing. And I just think. <laughs> There's just not enough certainty with what's going on with it in the minute, in my opinion. Mm. I'm with you, Paul. Absolutely. Yeah. We're all old school, aren't we, really? Yeah. Traditionalists. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think sometimes it, with the, the decisions, certainly now, that can cost a lot of money to a certain extent, yeah. whether it's Championship or Premier League, I understand. However, we're well, not bothered about a toenail, though, are we? No, no. Either I, way. No, I think if, it, if it's. Blatantly obvious. I mean, there's been many a goal you've seen where it's gone clearly off somebody's hand or he's miles offside, and I, that's fine. I think people wouldn't have an issue with that. No. I just, I just fear for the players putting pressure on the referee to go to VAR. I fear for that initial goal going in, and yeah. the stadium. How's that going to look? That's my big worry. Taking away the emotion of the moment is my biggest downer on it. I mean, you can imagine after that brilliant goal, which we saw in part one that you scored against Watford, that solo goal. Mm. Can you imagine scoring that in the conditions of the Premier League next season and um, having to take a deep breath and, and oh, I wonder if something happened before I got the ball that will see this goal disallowed. It kind of... Yeah, it, it, well, it, it, I agree, Alan. I, I just it. don't think it sits right and I also think that us as coaches now have to change the way that we coach in terms of players' arms, defenders oh. behind the back, and so that there's lots of different connotations with it. You need to take all your defenders to hospital and have their <laughs> arms amputated <laughs> during the summer. I mean, it's that ridiculous, yeah, isn't it? It is, unfortunately. It's so stupid, and that's not VAR. That is the rule makers, mm. all the lawmakers. Absolutely stupid. You get me going. <laughs> I'm so angry about that. Law change is not true. <clears throat> Thanks, gents. Uh, brilliant debut, Paul, and good to see you again, Matt. Good luck for the season. Uh, look forward to seeing you in that see you on Saturday. You're doing the team talk <laughs> on Saturday. Hillsborough Arena, uh, it's an all day event as well, but we look forward to seeing you there if you can make it. This is repeated on my YouTube later. Thanks for joining us. See you next week. Bye bye.